In this video, I'm going to show you how I created a custom LG TV remote control in Home Assistant. This custom remote not only enhances the functionality of the original remote, but also adds some extra buttons to control automations. It's designed to work right on your phone, making it super convenient to use. So let's dive in and see how it's done. In this video, I'll show you how I created a custom LG TV remote control in Home Assistant. While my setup is for an LG TV, you can easily adapt it for other smart TVs. The process might vary slightly, but it's definitely doable. I wanted a remote that could give me direct access to my favorite streaming apps or input sources. The original remote has some shortcuts, but not all the ones I use regularly. On top of that, I wanted a way to control automations related to my TV without digging into the Home Assistant settings, making everything accessible at the press of a button. So, let me show you how I made it happen. The first step is to ensure you have the LG WebOS integration installed in your Home Assistant setup. Once that's ready, you're good to go. All right, let's move on to the next step, uploading all the images we'll need to create this custom remote control. First, I open the file editor and click on the Tabs button. From there, I scroll down and enter the www folder. If you don't see this folder in your setup, you'll need to create it. The www folder serves as a local directory that makes files accessible in Home Assistant. After creating the folder, make sure to restart Home Assistant to apply the changes. Inside the www folder, I create a new folder by clicking on the New Folder button at the top. I'll name this folder TV Remote and click OK. Now it's time to upload the images. I click on the TV Remote folder and then on the Upload File button at the top. This brings up the File Selection menu where I choose the image I want to upload. These images are the components of the remote that I've created specifically for this project. If you'd like to use them, I'll leave a link in the description so you can download them. I'll start by uploading the first image, clicking OK, and then repeating the process for the rest of the images. To save time, I'll speed up this part of the video. Now that all the images have been uploaded, we're ready to move on to the next step. Now I'll create a new dashboard specifically for the remote control. To do this, I click on the Edit button, the pencil icon in the top right corner, and then select the Add Dashboard button. In the configuration pop-up, I choose the panel layout. I'll name the dashboard TV Remote and select a TV Remote icon to represent it. Once that's done, I hit Save. Next, I'll add a card to the dashboard. I click the Add Card button at the bottom right, and in the pop-up, I scroll down to select the Picture Elements card. The first thing I do here is remove the State Badge element because I won't need it for this setup. In the Card Options, I insert the file path to the base image of the remote. Once I do that, the image appears on the right side of the screen, and I hit Save. Now, you might notice that the image looks too big on the screen. That's because I optimized the image size to fit perfectly on a phone, which is where I plan to use this remote. For now, I'm using this dashboard to check that everything is working correctly during the setup process. Now I need to create a helper that will return the active source input on the TV. To do this, I go to Settings, then Devices and Services, and click on the Helpers tab. Next, I click the Create Helper button at the bottom right and select Template from the list of helper types. Then I choose Template Sensor as the option. In the State Template input, I need to specify the entity ID and the attribute I want to retrieve. In this case, it's the source. I'll paste a piece of code that tells Home Assistant which entity and attribute I want to track. Don't worry, I'll leave this code in the description for you. Just make sure to replace the TV ID with your own. If you're not sure what your TV ID is, go to Settings, Devices and Services, find the LG WebOS Smart TV integration, and click on Entities. You'll see your TV's Entity ID there. Just copy it. Once I've inserted the code, I name the sensor TV Source. In the preview, I can already see the current source on my TV. Right now it shows Apple TV. If I change the source on the TV, the helper updates automatically. For example, it now shows Prime Video. Finally, I hit Submit, and the helper is ready to use. 
Now it's time to start adding the buttons. First, I go into edit mode by clicking the edit button at the bottom right. In the card configuration pop-up, I add an image element. For the entity, I choose the helper we just created, the TV source helper. I'll name this button Apple TV. In the tap behavior settings, I select perform action and choose the media player select source action. Next, I set my TV as the entity and in the source input field, I type Apple TV. For the hold behavior, I leave it set to nothing. Then I insert the file path to the image of the Apple TV button. In the state image input, I add the path to a second image that shows the button as the selected source. I configure it so this image will only appear when the source is Apple TV. In the style box, I adjust the size and position of the button. I'll leave the exact details for size and location in the description so you can replicate it easily. The button is now in the correct position and I hit save. To test it, I tap on the Apple TV button and the TV switches to Apple TV. At the same time, the button lights up to indicate that it's the currently selected source. It's looking great so far. Let's keep going and create the other source buttons. The good news is that this part is even easier because we can simply duplicate the button we just made and tweak a few details. First, I click the Duplicate button to make a copy of the Apple TV button. Then, I update the title to Netflix. Next, I change the source to Netflix and replace the image paths with the Netflix button image for both the default and selected states. I adjust the state image so it only appears when the TV source is set to Netflix. Finally, I set the correct size and position for the button. Now I just repeat these steps for the remaining source buttons. I go back, click Duplicate again, and update the title, source, and images for each button accordingly. To keep things moving, I'll speed up this part so you don't have to watch the repetitive steps. Now that the source buttons are complete, let's move on to creating another set of buttons, this time to control other TV functions. First, I go back into the card configuration and add a new image element. I'll name this button Channel Up and set the tap behavior to perform action. For the action, I choose WebOS TV button. Next, I select my TV as the entity and set the button to channel up. For the hold behavior, I leave it as nothing. Then, I insert the local file path for the channel up button image. Finally, I adjust the size and location of the button so it's in the correct position on the remote. Once that's done, I can quickly create the other buttons by duplicating this one. I click Duplicate, then update the title, the button action, the image path, and the size and location for each button. To save time, I'll speed up this part of the video as I repeat these steps for the remaining buttons. Once all the buttons are configured, I hit Save, and we're ready to move on. The next button isn't directly related to the TV, it's for controlling the lights to create a movie ambiance automatically. To set this up, I first create a script. I go to Settings, then to Automations and Scenes, and select the Scripts tab. Next, I click on the Create Script button at the bottom right and choose Create New Script. I start adding actions to the script. For the first action, I select Switch Turn On and set the entity to the light I want to turn on. In this case, the wall lamp. Then I add another action and select Switch Turn Off. I set the entity to the light I want to turn off, which is the living room ceiling light. Once both actions are configured, I hit the Save button, name the script Ambient Light, and select a bulb icon to represent it. I also click the Rename button to finalize the script. Now, I head back to the dashboard to create the button that will trigger this script. I click the Edit button and add a new image element. For the entity, I select the script I just created. I set the tap behavior to Toggle and name the button Ambient Light. I set the hold behavior to nothing. Next, I insert the file path for the button's image and set the same path in the state image box for when the button is off. Finally, I adjust the size and position of the button to fit perfectly on the remote. Once that's done, I hit save. When I test the button, it works perfectly. It turns on the wall lamp and turns off the living room ceiling light, creating the ideal movie ambiance. The next button is the power button, which will allow me to turn the TV on and off. 
This one requires a small configuration to work. First, I go to the file editor and click on the Browse File System button at the top. Then, I open the configuration.yaml file and add a line with the following command, wake on land. This enables the TV to turn on remotely using the wake on land protocol. Once the line is added, I save the configuration file. With that setup done, let's head back to the dashboard to continue. Now let's set up the power button on the dashboard. I go into edit mode again and add a conditional element. I name it power on and set the condition to entity state. For the entity, I select my TV and I configure the condition so that it applies when the TV's state is off. Next, I add an image element to the condition. I set the tap behavior to perform action and choose wake on LAN as the action. At this point, I need to insert the TV's MAC address. To find this, turn on your TV, press the settings button on the remote, go to the connection tab, and you'll see the MAC address listed there. Once I've added the MAC address, I insert the file path to the power off button image and adjust the size and position to match the dashboard layout. Now I go back and create another conditional element for when the TV is on. I name this one power off and set the condition to entity state. Again, I select my TV as the entity, but this time I configure the condition for when the TV's state is on. Within this condition, I add another image element. I set my TV as the entity and configure the tap behavior to toggle. I then add the file path for the power on button image and insert the same image in the state image box for when the state is on. Finally, I adjust the size and position of the button to fit perfectly and I hit save. Now it's time to test it. When I tap the power button, the TV turns on and the button lights up to indicate that it's on. If I tap the button again, the TV turns off and the button updates to show that it's off. It works perfectly. Next, I'll configure a button to turn on and off the notifications that Home Assistant sends to my TV. Sometimes I don't want to receive notifications, and with this button, I can toggle them easily. First, I go to Settings and then to Devices and Services. I select the Helpers tab and click on Create Helper. From the list, I choose Toggle, name it Notifications, and pick a message icon to represent it. Then, I hit Create. This helper acts as a virtual switch with on and off states, which will be very useful for controlling the notifications. You'll see how in just a moment. Now, I go back to the dashboard, click Edit, and create a new image element. For the entity, I select the notifications helper I just created. I name the button Notifications and set the tap behavior to Toggle. Next, I insert the paths to the button images. I add one image for when the state is on and another for when it's off. After that, I set the correct size and position of the button on the dashboard. At this point, if I tap the button, it toggles the state of the helper between on and off. However, it doesn't yet control the notifications like I want. To make this work, I hit save and go to settings, then to automations and scenes. Here, I already have an automation set up to notify me when someone is at the door. That's one of the notifications I want to control with this button. I open the automation triggered by the door sensor, which sends a notification to the TV as one of its actions. To link this automation to the button, I click Add Condition and choose Entity State. For the entity, I select the Notifications Helper and set the state to On, since I only want this automation to run when notifications are enabled. After saving the changes, the automation is now tied to the button. Back on the TV remote dashboard, if the notifications button is lit up, I know it's active and I'll receive notifications. If I tap it, the button turns off and I won't receive any notifications. It's a simple yet effective way to manage TV notifications. Now let's set up the final button on the dashboard, the alarm clock. I have an automation that turns my TV into an alarm clock. It powers on the TV and starts playing a YouTube video at a specific time. If you're interested in how I created this, check out my video, Five Great Automations for Your TV. I'll leave the link in the description. However, I don't want this automation to run every day, so I created a button to toggle it on and off. First, I go to Settings, then to Devices and Services. I select the Helpers tab, click on Create Helper, and choose Toggle from the list. I name it Alarm and select the clock icon. Then I hit Create. 
Next, I return to the dashboard, click Edit, and create a new image element. For the entity, I select the alarm helper I just created. I name the button Alarm and set the tap behavior to Toggle. I then add the file paths for the button images. One image is displayed when the alarm is on and another when it's off. After that, I adjust the size and position of the button to fit perfectly on the dashboard. I hit Save. Now when I tap the button, it toggles the state of the helper between on and off. However, at this point, it doesn't yet control the automation. To link the button to the alarm clock automation and go to Settings, then to Automations and Scenes. Here, I already have an automation called Wake Up With YouTube, which is set to trigger at 6 a.m. and starts playing a YouTube video on the TV. To control this automation with the button, I click on Add Condition. I select Entity State as the condition type. For the entity, I choose the Alarm Helper and set the state to On, so the automation will only run when the alarm is enabled. After saving, the automation is now tied to the button. Back on the TV remote dashboard, if the alarm button is lit up, I know it's active, and the automation will wake me at 6 a.m. with a YouTube video. If I tap it again, the button turns off, disabling the alarm. And that's it. We've successfully created a fully customized LG TV remote in Home Assistant, complete with source controls, automation triggers, and even a handy alarm clock. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and that it inspires you to customize your own smart home setup. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more guides like this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment with your thoughts or questions, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It really helps support the channel and ensures you won't miss any future content. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.